and welcome back everybody thank you for joining shooting gallery new england today we got a special video for you we are actually at the bench and today we're going to be going over how to pin and weld start to finish a muscle brake run the further distance we're using a scorpion uh rifle from cz in nine millimeter and we're going to be putting bg6 precision epsilon i have already have a video on this putting it on the more made me do it build which i'm going to link right about here and today we're just going to be going over how to pin and weld it start to finish even including timing the muzzle brake as well so please stay along it's going to be kind of quick but also informative and make sure you're commenting and subscribing if you're not we have a 500 subscriber giveaway so let's get into the video now Alrighty, so before we get into this, I do want to just say I am at work, so if you hear some gunshots or if you hear people talking in the background, it's a large warehouse, so you might hear some people. But it's very simple. This is how we're going to start off. First, whenever you get a muzzle brake, you're going to get a crush washer or lock nut. The last video we did on how to time a muzzle brake, that actually had a lock nut. This one's a little bit easier. We just have a crush washer. Uh, so all you need on this part is I like to use a three-quarter inch wrench to time it. So we're just going to go ahead and time it right here. Throw the crush, crush washer on where it's the cone shape towards the barrel. Throw that on. And we're just going to time it. Okay, good. Now, at this point, I'm just going to throw that once around now it's going to be kind of difficult but uh, that's about timed you know you timed it right when the pre-cut hole is pretty much linear with the uh, top of the rail. It's all going to be different depending on the gun, but at least on Scorpions. As long as your pre-cut drill hole for when you have to pin it is pretty much in line with the bottom pick rail or m -lock slot, you timed it right. So with that, I'll also show you. Another way to know is especially, let's move that out. These slots right here, as long as they're facing up, that's the way you want to have it oriented, especially on this one. Sorry about that. Again, we're at a live shop, so let's get this set up in the mill. All right, guys, so we already have it kind of pre-set up in the mill here, so you don't have to have a mill when you're going to be drilling out a muzzle brake. You can actually have a drill press as long as you know, you know, simple machining, which I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to be looking for in this particular instance but just so you know that you don't need to have a mill but we're just going to have it set up i'm going to show you hopefully on camera exactly what you're going to be looking for when you're doing this particular job so let's get down i'm going to show you how to look for it and line everything up for the muzzle brake drilling all right guys so i'm just going to show you how to quickly do this what you're really going to be looking for is let me get a printer Sorry about that. Alrighty. You're going to be drilling the cell, whether you're on a bench or not. Hopefully, the lighting's working. You're going to have an outer circle and an inner circle. To make sure you don't drill through the rifle in the barrel, make sure that you eyeball it, work the bit to the right depth, and you don't want to go past the outer circle, if that makes sense. It's more. It's going to be easier if you look head on and you're looking at the muzzle brake, but when you're looking at the muzzle brake, shine a light in. When you see the circle and where you can see the rifle in the beginning, you want to hit that sweet spot and don't go past the inner circle or you're going to drill through the rifle in. So let's uh, get going on drilling this. Now we're going to get drilling here. I do recommend getting cutting oil if you're going to be drilling through a muzzle brake. It makes things easier, it acts as a heat sink. Also make sure you're wearing your safety glasses, guys. A little bit of oil, and it's going to be a little bit loud, so bear with us. Real quick, I do want to also mention, make sure that you have the hole lined up perfectly, so it's all aimed in perfect.
good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this set up on the bench to put the steak in, and then we're gonna weld it. So bear with us. Thank you for joining. All right, everybody. So we're at the bench. We're gonna essentially put the pin into the firearm. So. When I mean pin and weld, after you already drill the muzzle brake, and the good thing with these VG6 Precisions, they're pretty much already pre-drilled, and you have to go through just a little bit of material. Uh, now, this is the point where we bring it to the bend, and the reason we're doing this is because some places do require you to pin and weld muzzle brakes, depending if you live in Connecticut, Massachusetts, whatever band state you have to, you can't have a traditional non-threaded barrel, that's why we're pinning it and welding it, so it, appeases the powers to be but when i mean pinning in we're talking about these dowel pins these are three thirty second inch uh three thirty seconds by 30 by three quarter inch dowel pins that we're just going to be putting in the muzzle brake tapping it into the threads a little bit we're going to knock it off with a hammer and then we're going to get to the welder and for this instance we're using tig welder so we're going to be tig welding this dowel pin into the muzzle brake so i'm just going to go ahead and keep going so hold on one second drop it in and always good to check lean back a little bit it's always good to check make sure all right yep that's all set pretty much if you have a flashlight you can check if you drill through it's not a huge deal if you drill through it's not gonna mess the rifling up but Take a medium sized hammer and let's adjust the camera so you can see. Now you're pretty much at this point, take the hammer. When you hear it bottom out, I usually use a rag, wrap it around, knock it off. So guys, we're at the point where we're gonna be welding this muzzle brake, so I'm gonna get the welder on. Everybody has different preferences, but the only thing you're really gonna need is a welder. Make sure you have the gas on if you're using TIG welding. And also, keep in touch with the nozzle to make sure your pin is sharp. There's no like bubbled over. There's no metal that you were trying to weld previously onto the point of the pin. And uh, make sure you have a welding helmet. This is pretty much gonna be your mainstay other than having the welder and the gas. So I'm gonna reposition the camera to get the best possible shot of welding the muzzle brake. And then we'll close this video out. So just stay tuned. go ahead and start the weld. Push it down, make a couple small circles. Make sure that's all good and well. And there you go. Take the ground off, or shut the gas off, and the TIG welding. I kind of feel like a power ranger with this welding mask on, I'm not going to lie. Got the welder off. Now, you're essentially at this point right here. So, once you use your dirty shop rag with all the oils, it actually brings the color back. So, you don't have to really even add like a Luma Black or Oxford Blue, whatever you want to re-blue the muzzle brake. But you were pretty much all set from here. So, we're going to get back up top, close the video out, and hope you enjoyed. TIG welding a muzzle brake to a Scorpion, uh, CZ Scorpion 9mm. So guys, that's how you pin and weld a muzzle brake on a 9mm carbine. So please make sure if you like this video, comment down below. Let us know if there's anything else we can maybe film a video on that you guys are interested in. And also, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, smashing the like button as well. We're going to head out because I actually got a clock out of work. So please be safe, stay shooting, and I'll see you soon. Peace.